Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, today we're going to talk about five tips that I use when I'm planning my nonfiction books. All right, so I mostly write in the field of nonfiction, and particularly I write in Christian nonfiction. Now, this is not about Christian books, so don't worry about that. This is just some general tips that you can use, whether you're doing a similar Christian book or whether you are doing just a general nonfiction book. So that's the area that we are going to address. Now, the first thing I always recommend that you do is you want to create a, as detailed as an outline as you can. Now, this doesn't mean you're set in stone. It just gives you a framework to which you start thinking. So all the different topics you might want to cover, list them out, maybe write something about them. What I might do is do bullet points and then just a brief summary what I want to accomplish in that individual chapter, and then that outline will end up getting reduced to your table of contents. And you might actually have to be doing some adjustments for that once you get started. So for example, and I am not amused, I actually started working on this and I got to like, there were like seven or 8,000 words in chapter two. I'm looking at this and I was like only halfway done. I said, this is insane. Like I need to do something here. So I ended up looking at the topic again and figuring out how to split it once again. So that ended up causing an extra chapter move some things around, but hey, it actually worked out great in the end because I ended up having two chapters that were completely secular, which is a great selling point of the book to say, hey, here's a Christian book about media entertainment that's not chock full of Bible verses. It just has, you know, it has a lot of stuff in the secular world in addition to those later on. Basically, it allowed me to draw a whole lot more from the culture before drawing my applications from the Bible. So it's definitely a fascinating uh, book in that respect. It's the only one I know of in that genre that, that actually pulls a lot of teaching from the secular world at the same time. Now, once you have your general outline done, your second step is to collect and organize your references. Now, if you've ever worked on like a, a dissertation, maybe you have a master's or a PhD and you know about collecting and organizing your bibliography, this is second nature to you. And I remember I had the desk behind me was empty and so I just totally filled that thing up in grad school with all these different piles of research papers. Uh, you want to do something similar to that. Now, in my case, as I write the Christian nonfiction, I'll usually have lists and lists of different related Bible verses with some ideas where to put them in. But you also want to pull in other resources and references as well. You're not just writing a nonfiction book with no resources and references. That just won't fly very well. So pull in a lot of your references. Pull out the individual quotes that you want to use. This is particularly useful if you are gathering a bibliography of non-scripture related things because you'll want to you'll want to have some papers but you'll also want to pull out individual quotes that you really enjoyed or or really talked about the point you're trying to make in the middle of all this. So that's actually a very important thing to do. Just make sure that you you are organizing and collecting your various references. Now, number three that I use, and I actually do all this in paper. I know that there are some great tools out there for organization. I love planning and plotting out my books on notebook paper. I love it. And so what I do is for every single chapter, I'll take the I'll take a blank page, I'm going to write the chapter at the top, and I'm just going to write an essay on that topic. And then what that allows me to do is spot the direction I'm trying to go, which will give me subheadings, subsections, it lets me know which types of references I'm wanting to use, all these different tips that I want to use for this. Now, as I am writing this essay, I have to understand that this essay is going to become the chapter outline. So we did either an essay or just a list for our topical overall table of contents. This one, we're doing an essay, which is going to be reduced into the chapter summary, which is going to give us the direction and keep us on task and on focus as we are writing. All right, number four. Number four, we are going to start writing. Now, if you saw my tips on how to just get motivated to write, this is going to be very similar to one of the tips in there. Just do it quickly. You don't want to get 
Start writing, get bogged down, track down the reference, put it in exactly, and then move on. You're going to lose your train of thought. So you want to move through as quickly as you can. Do something to remind you of the reference. So what I'll usually do is, you know, blah, 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 parentheses, the reference about this, and parentheses, and then keep going. And I might stop and highlight that in orange so I can find it quickly. So write quick, write fast, brief mention of the notation just enough so you remember what that notation is to go find it and put it back into your book down the road. So you're not spending the time to put the full references in there yet. You're very quickly. You do not want to lose the train of thought. You do not want to lose your focus. Just move quickly. Now, number five, this is when you are actually going to go back through. Now, this is where I will deviate a little bit from the previous video talking about the five general writing tips and that when I'm doing nonfiction, I don't want to bruise through it really quick and then come back at the end and go through. I actually want to breeze through the chapter as quick as I can. And then while the chapter is still fresh in my mind, now I'm going to go back. I'm going to do a quick first pass edit, drop in all of the references and that's really the time you're going in. You want to put in the references. You want to put in the direct quotes. Anything that is important, you want to drop in there at this point in time. So that way you don't forget what you're trying to go, but it's also you're not stopping to put in all the references and losing the direction that you are moving in your essay. So just plow through it, write through it, quick notations, and then after that chapter's done, before you move on to the next chapter, you're going to go back through, do a first pass edit, drop in your references, drop in all of your notes, end notes, footnotes, whatever else you're doing. Once that has a single pass edit through, then proceed and do the next chapter quickly, and then stop and do the references, and then you can go back again to the beginning and start going through and and adding all of these other references in there again. So there is your five tips to planning your nonfiction book. Those are the tips that I use. So hopefully those will help you out. So thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to, uh, you can subscribe to the channel, like the video if you uh, if you do, and uh, that's actually a, a very beneficial thing. Leave me a comment. Let me know your tips down there. Also, I'll point out I do have some social media. Those are on on the end screen. We have. Macedon. Uh, we may or may not have Twitter. It's a long story about that. Uh, it should be there right now. And I have a Goodreads account and you can also find me uh, over on Tumblr as well. So those are some of the places where you can, uh, you can follow along in addition to writingdoneright.net. So with that, thanks for coming along. And I hope that this video will help you to get your writing done right.